Today, I want to talk about the difference between some of these saltwater API test kits, the ones that you compare colors to, and these HANA checkers. Um, HANA checkers are very well known in the industry, and they are very well recommended. So we're going to go over some tips and tricks and some different options you have when it comes to testing in your reef tank. The first thing I want to talk about is nitrate. So nitrates are probably your most commonly tested chemical in your reef tank, just so you can gauge how things are doing. Salinity is, but we'll talk about that later. Right now, I want to focus on nitrates. Nitrates are basically your fish poop. They make ammonia and ammonia turns into nitrates eventually. After your cycle, meaning once your, your fish tank is cycled, the ammonia is getting turned into nitrates are really important to keep track of. One of the most common ways that people test in their tanks is by getting one of these saltwater master test kits from either API or other different systems use it. That involves you take these dropper bottles like this and you add 10 of this one and 10 of this one to a vial that has some of your water in it. After a little bit, it starts to look like that. And then you go ahead and compare that color on a chart. Looking at this, you might think, okay, that's probably right there. So probably about 10 parts per million. Would you agree? Maybe somewhere in between. We'll say eight. So eight parts per million from the API test kit. That obviously has some guesswork associated with it. The nice thing about these test kits is this was $35 and I got four different tests. I get ammonia, nitrites, nitrates, and high range pH. Those are inexpensive. A lot of people buy those. I bought that personally to start. Uh, I just was like, I don't want to get the expensive equipment. So I'm going and I have my reef tank and things just aren't happy. I ask the local, you know, fish store people. I say, what do you think's going on? I have this going on, this going on. And they said, well, honestly, your nitrates are probably really low. And if that's not the issue, then you probably have really low of just like smaller minerals. You probably used up all of your tanks, uh, smaller minerals. And so I was like, okay, well, my test kit is showing nitrates. I wonder if that's the problem. And so I went and I said, okay, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go invest in one of these. So this is the HANA checker. It comes in a box like this. This is just for one chemical, right? Just this one nitrates comes with, you know, some cuvettes, pipette and some reagent. This little insert, I, this is an STL I made. I'll put a link in the description. You can 3d print this for this box. It's really handy. It gives you a spot to put these things while you're, uh, you're mixing them up. So really simple. You can just put it in there. Pretty handy. Anyway. So how this works is you go and take some water. And I'm just going to run through this real quick for you. Take some water and you add it in there like that and turn it on. So what it does is ask for C1, which is Cavette 1. So that's the baseline, right? This is just the water, no reagent. So I'm going to test it. And what it's doing is it's just shining a light through it to see how foggy it is. So it took a reading. Now I switch it out. And normally what you do is you take that empty, that vial of water and you add one of these guys to it which is a little reagent packet and you rip it open, pour the little powder that's in there into it. And then you shake it up for two minutes and you'll start to get this color. Okay. So I'm just going to put this in there. Right. And normally it, you hold it down and it gives you a timer for how long to let it sit, but I'm just going to run it since it's been sitting for a while. My reading is 22.9 parts per million of nitrates. So as you can see, there's a big discrepancy there. And this method said, you know, five to 10, somewhere in there. And this said 22. Big difference, right? We're, we're talking triple uh, what we were thinking. And that is concerning to me. I started testing. And when I ran my test kit or ran my water through the HANA, I actually read zero on my nitrates. It couldn't read it. It was too low. I ran it again and I actually got about two. So um, there's a little bit of variance there, but I was getting very, very low nitrates. Whereas this looked exactly like that, looked exactly like it did now that I just tested it. So this had very inconsistent results. So what do I think? Do you need a HANA tester for your reef? I want to talk about my friend's reef tank real quick. He has a small reef tank. It's about the same size as this cube, actually. It's a bio cube. Um, which is an all-in-one aquarium. It has the filtration in the back, has a light built in. It's really nice, has a cover. It's a great little tank for new reefers. So he has one of those. It was running at his dad's house for years and years and years. And his dad's like, I don't really want to keep track of this little tank anymore. I have my big tank. 
you can have it. So he gives it to my friend and my friend doesn't test for anything. He's never owned a test kit. He doesn't know how to test for salinity, anything like that. He just goes to the saltwater aquarium store or saltwater store, buys salt water for his tank, takes it home, does water changes with that and leaves it there. He doesn't make it any more complex than that. I can tell you right now, his fish tank is awesome. It is doing so well. His anemones are huge. They're just standard red rose bubble tip anemones. They're this big and they split all the time. My anemone is from his tank. He just doesn't know what to do with them because they keep splitting in his tank. And uh, he has a couple of corals in there. They don't do super great in his tank, but he's got some clownfish, some crabs, tons of snails. They just breed like crazy in his tank. And it is an awesome little tank. He never does any tests. So if he can do that, why should you need to test? My argument is uh, he's a little limited on what he can put in there. He'll go buy a coral every once in a while and put it in there. And it usually doesn't last very long. It might die. Uh, the light might not be right. Um, the nitrates might be too high. Who knows? He feeds that tank pretty heavily. And it, the stuff that's living in there does really, really well. The stuff that doesn't, doesn't. And so he just kind of, you know, if it doesn't make it, it doesn't make it. And he, you know, shrugs and moves on. For me, I really want to have a mixed reef tank, mostly LPS and like my anemone and some fish and inverts and things like that. If something's not doing well, I want to be able to check exactly what's going on. So I like having my test kits. I didn't really understand how inaccurate these things can be if, you know, not taken care of properly. They, they just tend to get inaccurate over time versus the HANA checkers where I know exactly where my things are at. I can put it into a spreadsheet, track things over time. Now my tank is at a really happy, really stable, around 20 is my goal for nitrates. And so if it gets low, I feed a little bit more. I add some coral food in there. Uh, some refroids tend to bump up my, my nitrates a little high. I just kind of keep track of it. If it's too high, I only feed mysis. If it's too low, I add a little bit. And I just kind of keep it stable right at that nitrate level. I keep my water changes very stable. If it's, if it's getting too high and then I do a water change so I can keep track of those things. That's what Hannah's good for. If all you're going to do is throw things in and hope it sticks, then you can probably get by with this sort of thing. I'm not really recommending this. As you can see, it was very inaccurate, but it's good enough to detect ammonia, nitrites, and nitrates. So if you need to just have an idea of when your tank is cycled. And I used the Dr. Tim's instant cycle and I just did a, a fishless cycle using this test and it worked great. And then I upgraded to a HANA. So if that's your plan, makes sense, go for it. The last piece I want to talk about is uh, salinity. So salinity is the most important thing that you can test for in an aquarium. If you're looking to get an aquarium or if you already have one and you don't have a salinity checker, I really recommend it. So this is a refractometer, super simple, really inexpensive and really consistent. It's not digital. This is a very manual process, but it's the most consistent thing that you can find out there. I just didn't trust it. But then I got this and I, I'm completely confident in when I'm testing how it goes. How it works is you add a little bit of water onto this little piece of glass here, close this. Then you look through this at a bright light and it'll reflect the light according to how salty the water is. So I'll put a little image right here to show you exactly what that looks like. So you can get a really good reading of what your where your aquarium's at. They do need calibration every once in a while. You just put some RO water on there, turn it to zero, and then add some salt water and you'll see exactly the difference there. So can't recommend a refractometer enough. I would say that that's the base, most basic thing that you can do because if your tank is getting out of whack, things aren't happy, it's always good to just check salinity, especially if you're mixing your own salt, it's critical. They don't work at all. <laughs> they, they'll work the first few times, but sometimes they get gummed up with salt. Got to clean it out really well. Sometimes there's bubbles on it that mess with it. It's just, it can be inconsistent. I don't think that they're really worth your time. Get a refractometer, you'll be much. In conclusion, if you're looking to get into reef keeping, I would start with a HANA nitrate checker and then maybe get one of these for ammonia because you really don't need to test those ever again. Um, if you're really concerned and you think I might be having an ammonia spike, um, you can go back to this and see if you have any ammonia. If it's detecting ammonia, then you can take another water sample over to your fish store and they'll test it for you. And that way you can have a really good test because they're going to have higher end testing equipment. They might even be using HANA checkers. So that's where I'd 
stay with that. I think that you really do need a nitrate checker, Hannah checker. Just makes a lot of sense. A lot less headache, really easy to use. The other one is phosphates. I think checking for phosphates is a really good idea. Phosphates tend to be a little bit more swingy. If you get phosphates, something might be leaking them into your tank. Uh, if you're getting seeing these weird spikes, it can be really dangerous for your fish corals and other things. So getting one of those is also another really good baseline. So nitrates, phosphates, and then one of these checkers, and you should be all set. The other one that people tend to get into is the alkalinity, and that's really important. If you're taking care of coral and you have a lot of, you're really wanting to keep it stable and you might have a lot of corals in there that are throwing off that balance. Um, that's another one that a lot of people invest in. So I would say phosphate or uh, nitrate checker is most important phosphate than alkalinity. Um, but of course, overall, definitely salinity is the most important. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Let me know what you, your ideal levels, if you have like a goal, like my goal, I want to keep around 20 um, parts per million nitrates in my tank. Well, I want to hear what your guys' ideal is. If you have, you're like, yeah, I keep a tank at 50 or I keep my tank at as low nitrates as possible, um, whatever it may be, I'd love to hear your opinions. Um, but other than that, Good luck with your tanks, guys. Hopefully you're not watching this video because you're having issues. I hope it's going well. So best of luck. We'll see you soon.